My name is Danica and today I have a weekend reading vlog. I've never really gotten the hang of vlogs, I think I just need more practice, but I've got a few books that I really want to get through this weekend so I thought I would do a vlog to hopefully motivate myself. So I have three different books that I am part way through. One is an audiobook that I don't need to finish this weekend but I am really enjoying it and that's Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is an MF romance which isn't something I usually read but it does have a bisexual main character and I I'm really enjoying it. This is actually one of my favorite romances I've ever read. I really am invested in the story, but also Danny Brown's full name is Danica with a K. <laughs> And I don't come across a lot of people who share my name in real life or in fiction. And listening to a romance audiobook with a main character who shares your name is an experience. One of the other two books that I'm reading, I started reading for all the books. So if you didn't know, I have become a co-host on Book Riot's All the Books podcast. And that means that the first Tuesday of every month, I talk about four of the books that came out that day that I have read and enjoyed. So that means I really have to keep on top of my new release making sure that I am reading them in time and coming up with notes so that I have it all ready by the time that the podcast is recorded. So I've been reading Throwaway Girls by Andrea Contos. This is actually one that comes out September 1st, but one of my books, the publication date changed and I had to swap in a new book, so I didn't get to actually finish Throwaway Girls before we recorded, but I have read about half of it and I'd like to finish it off. I was really liking it in the first couple of chapters, and now I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. There's something about the writing where I feel like scenes don't really flow into each other and it feels like things are happening suddenly. I always feel like I missed a page or I skipped a paragraph, but I do want to finish it off and be able to give it a full review at the Lesbury at least, even though I didn't finish it in time for all the books. And the other book that I'm halfway through is Love After the End, an anthology of two-spirit and indigiqueer speculative fiction. And that's one that I requested from Arsenal Pulp Press, which is my favorite publisher, and obviously I'm really excited about this one. I am always looking for more queer and two-spirit indigenous books to read. I really liked Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time, and this is apparently the sequel to that, which I actually didn't realize until I was just looking at the cover now. So I'd like to finish both of those so that I can vlog about another book, The Life and Times of Butch Dykes by Eloisa Aquino. So every month on Patreon, my patrons choose what book they would like me to read and vlog about, and this month they chose this one. We're getting close to the end of month, so I have got to finish this. But this will be a very quick book to get through. It's mostly portraits with some short biographies, but it looks amazing. I'm really looking forward to this one. So I think I'll start by reading on the back porch and dry my hair. I just got out of the shower, so I'll let the sun dry my hair. And I'll start with Throwaway Girls and see how far along I can get. Right now my partner is rearranging the whole house. He's moving his bookcases from in his room to in the living room and then I'm gonna move some of my books onto that bookcase. This is probably gonna look all different by the end of the weekend so I'm not sure how much filming I will do inside the house right now because there's lots of stuff piled up everywhere but I will start by reading outside and I'll let you know how I do. So it's about 5.30 now and I have been slowly reading Throwaway Girls, but I haven't been reading a ton of it. Mostly because I'm just not loving it, which I hate because I already recommended it on all the books, but I'm more than halfway through and I just want to finish it. But right now I have a bunch of laundry to fold, so I'm going to listen to Take a Hint Danny Brown while I fold and put away this laundry, and then I will get back into Throwaway Girls and hopefully finish it because it's so important, I think, for thrillers to know how it ends. So I really want to get to the end of this book because I really liked the beginning, so maybe once I finish it I will end up liking the book as a whole, we'll find out. Also, I'm in my laundry clothes right now in case that wasn't obvious. But I mean, it's a pandemic. You don't expect me to be like well dressed and presentable, I hope. That's what I'm saying, Danica. I. He hesitated, then forged on. I love you as you are, exactly as you are. Her thoughts slammed to a stop. What? She said, Be
So I'm about 75% of the way, hi Debbie. I'm about 75% of the way through Throwaway Girls and I am liking it better. I think I know who the other narrator is and things are starting to come together in a more satisfying way. So I think it was just a little bit of a slump in the middle there. But I am going to make myself a smoothie because I had a giant lunch and now I just want a light dinner. And I'm going to feed the dogs dinner because they are being very annoying because it's time. Girls? Girls, do you want dinner? Do you want dinner, Lola? <laughs> want dinner? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. What's that? What's that, Debbie? Is that your food bowl? What do you think, Debbie? Should we give you your bowl? Should we give you your bowl? Okay. Yeah. All right, you ready, Debbie? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's get yours, Lola. Okay, come on. <laughs> come in. There you go. Alright, so now the dogs are fed, I'm gonna feed myself. Usually I would have given them both their balls in the backyard, but Lola wasn't eating this morning, so I wanted to make sure she's actually eating her dinner. But she definitely doesn't seem to have a lack of appetite, so that doesn't seem to be a problem. And I thought I would show you our new little game room that Ron designed. It's got all our board games so carefully and neatly organized. And here's the other shelf here. The drill is temporary. So it's a nice little game room now. We're gonna put the tablecloth on the table and it looks really nice. All right, I got my smoothie, which is just banana and strawberry peanut butter. So it's basically just a milkshake and it's delicious. And then I'm gonna get back to reading Throwaway Girls. All right, so it is just after nine and I finished Throwaway Girls and it was a real journey. I, like I said, liked it in the beginning. I thought it was really intriguing. And then I thought the middle really dragged, but by the end, I was entirely on board again. And when I was doing the all the books recommendation, I looked through some non-spoiler reviews to get an idea of the tone and everything. And it seems like a lot of people didn't like the main character. And I found that a lot of the time when people talk about unlike female characters, main characters. Those are usually the books that I really like. And that was definitely the case in this one. I think that people say she's mean when she's really just angry and she has full right to be angry. And just the way the story came together in the end, I'm not going to spoil it because it's a thriller, it's a bit of a mystery, but I found it really satisfying. And there was a point where I thought it was going to go in one direction, which is usually where stories like this go. And I was very grateful that it went in another direction. And I mean, I had supported her choices. So again, I'm not going to spoil it, but while I was reading it, it went from like four star to two star to three star. And then by the end, back out to a four star. I think there are some weak points. I have some complaints, but overall I really enjoyed it and I thought it was a great mystery. So I'm gonna read a little bit of Love After the End tonight and then hopefully I will finish that tomorrow. But either way, I will vlog about the life and times of Butch Dykes and make sure that I get that Patreon vlog in. So I will probably check in with you again tomorrow. Hello again. It is Sunday and I've actually finished my audio book, which I wasn't really intending on finishing. And that's because last night I wasn't sleeping very well, so I listened to the rest of the audiobook of Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and I loved it. I love that whole book. I am really impressed because I don't usually like MF romance. I don't even read FF romance that much, but I loved that audiobook. I immediately put a hold on the first book in the series, which I think is Get a Clue, Chloe Brown, so I'll be listening to that one as well. And I also read for an hour today during a Zoom read-along. So on the Lesbury, between the Lesbury reviewers and the Lesbury patrons, we have a kind of bi-weekly Zoom read-along that one of the reviewers, Mallory, runs, which is awesome. So it's inspired by quarantined pages where we just get together for an hour, we talk about what we're reading in the first five minutes, and then we just kind of turn off the cameras, read for an hour, come back, talk about what we've read, and it is a really great reason for me to actually 
sit down and read and it's been kind of my main reliable time that I read during quarantine so I really appreciate it. And I read an hour of Love After the End so I'm about 60% of the way through now and I definitely think I can finish it today. And I'm still really enjoying it. It's super interesting to read because there's a lot of themes going on about sci-fi and space travel and connection to place and especially this idea of what if humans are basically evacuating the earth because it's dying and what would that mean for these different indigenous nations and cultures and the story is look at these choices and how those individuals decide whether to stay or go and what that would look like going to a new planet, a new land. It also has a lot of words that are untranslated in different indigenous languages and some references that I don't understand and I think that's kind of the point. It's really I think written by and for indigenous especially two-spirit people so it's been a really interesting reading experience and I'm so glad that this series exists. I hope there's going to be more in the series because I find it very thought-provoking and also I think it's something that really needs to be out there because there's not a lot of two-spirit literature right now, especially not a lot that are showcasing so many different nations and voices and authors. So I am going to finish off that hopefully today and then I'll see if I am starting The Life and Times of Butch Dykes and if not I will roll this reading vlog into tomorrow and finish with them but I thought I would just check in and now I'm going to go make lunch and I will talk to you again soon. So it's about quarter after 10 at night and I didn't vlog all day and I also didn't read any more than just during the Zoom read along and that's because mostly I've been watching Jane the Virgin and I've been watching it because I've been doing Mark Watch's watch alongs. So if you don't know Mark Urshiro, he is an amazing author but he also has a blog called Mark Reads and Mark Watches where he watches TV shows and movies and reads books and kind of reviews them chapter by chapter, episode by episode, and he also records himself watching the video so you can kind of watch it along with him, which is something that sounds super weird and abstract but is so much fun because he is very expressive and Mark is a friend of mine. We've known each other for many years now, so I always enjoy watching shows with him and I love Jane the Virgin, but I have fallen behind and I'm trying to catch up, so I've been watching a ton of Jane the Virgin, re-watching it again, and it's been really fun and I just did that instead of reading and not even really mad but it means this reading vlog I'm gonna roll into tomorrow which I kind of didn't mean to be a reading day but I need to finish reading Love After the End and finish reading The Life and Times of Butch Dykes so I can vlog about that so that's just what Monday's gonna be and that's fine because it's still a pandemic I still don't have a job until another week and then we'll see what happens so until then I'm just going to keep watching Jane the Virgin and keep reading so I will talk to you tomorrow Hello, it is 3.20 in the afternoon on Monday and I haven't done any reading yet but Ron has brought his bookshelf into the living room and I'm about to put my books on it so I thought I would show you what that's gonna look like. I'm combining a bunch of books that are in different places but I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna lay it out and I will probably be filming out here now so it'll be a little bit of a different layout but Ron's got all of his books up here and I'll show you what it looks like now and then I I will show you what it looks like in the end. So here's the giant bookcase. Ron's books are all there. We've got this big pile of books that are still waiting to be moved and these books are mine they're gonna end up on that shelf and then a bunch of books in my room will as well so I'm gonna get started.
Alright, so this is my new bookshelf setup. This is possibly my new filming setup. I'm gonna see if I get enough natural light here. I might have to go back to my room, but for now, this is the setup. And I will show you around. I moved a few things to make all the books fit, so I'll show you what it ended up looking like. Okay, so these are the shelves. These are my shelves, and then the ones on the left are Ron's. Starting from the top, we have my unread lesbian fiction. Second shelf, more unread lesbian fiction, all alphabetical by author. Got a few face outs at the end. And then unread lesbian nonfiction. And again, I had a little room, so I put some pulpy and just fun books at the end there. Then I have my lesbian literary criticism, and then my lesbian pulp and lesbian pulp-ish books with some more little face outs. And finally, we have my red books, my favorite books, starting with the lesbian books. And then down at the bottom, we have some of my red non-lesbian books. And that's the setup. All right, so it is Tuesday now and it's ooh, almost five. And I know I didn't update yesterday and that's because I didn't read anymore. And I haven't read anything today yet. And this is why I said I needed practice with vlogs and also apparently with just having any self-control because I haven't been reading. But it is still pretty nice and sunny out so I think I'm gonna go outside and finally read The Life and Times of Butch Dykes. Finally finish this and start it and vlog about it. It should be a pretty quick read. I'm, I think I can read this in one sitting. And so I'll go outside, enjoy the sunshine, and I'll let you know what I think. It's almost too sunny out here, but I will enjoy it. It's nice and breezy. So I'm going to sit down and start reading. Can you tell what kind of book this is going to be? Because in the copyright page, it says, if you bought this on Amazon, I'm so sorry because you could have gotten it cheaper and supported a small independent publisher at microcosm.pub. This is so timely to what I've seen on Twitter a lot, recent conversations, because it says all of the heroes in these pages loved women, resisted feminine roles, and were or are undeniably queer. What it means to be a butch dyke is less fixed. One of the points this book showcases beautifully is that gender is fluid. Our identities can shift subtly or dramatically throughout our lives. And it talks about some of the people featured in the book who might have identified differently with different language available to them or who started to present differently at other points in their lives. And I already love this and I'm literally four pages in. These portraits are so beautiful. I love this as a teacher. The learning process is something you can incite, literally incite, like a riot. I feel like that is great inspiration. So I finished The Life and Times of Butch Dykes by Eloisa Aquino, and it was too bright out there, so I came back in here to talk about it, and I really liked it. So this was originally a collection of zines, and some of them had to be kind of reconstructed. I love all of the portraits. There's also a lot of quotations from the different people who are featured, which is nice. There's actually less about gender and sexuality than I thought there would be. It seems to be acting more as a spotlight on these possible heroes or representations around the world and from history and I think that when you're queer that is super important because you've often been erased from history or distanced from your own history so just having representations of people like you especially that people like you have existed for a long time is really important obviously because they were originally zines they're not super long you just kind of get a little bit of a glimpse into each person's life but it's enough to get you interested and and maybe checking out more about them in their life. And again, it's a quick read. It's about half illustrations, but I really enjoyed it. I loved how diverse it was. The author and illustrator is Brazilian Canadian and the people featured are from all over the world. Some of them are still alive. Some of them are historical figures. Some of them have different identities and 
and genders. So there are people who use they, them pronouns. A lot of them, we probably don't know exactly what label they would use today, but they are all kind of featured and collected under this umbrella. So I really liked this. You can read it in one sitting, but it is such a cool collection and I love the illustrations and I really love Microcosm Press. I think they do really cool things and things that not a lot of other publishers would be doing. So if you want a little coffee table illustrated book about Butch Dykes throughout history, check this one out. All right, I think I'm going to end my weekend vlog here since we're already in day four of it and Tuesday is by no definitions part of the weekend. So thank you for your patience in this weird little vlog experiment and I hope that you are doing well and happy reading.